Hi, so what we're going to do is have a quick look at the current state of play with the Glossy Deploy tool. Uh, what I have is a small lab environment with four nodes, they're all virtual machines, as shown here. Um, one, two, three, and four. If we just look at uh, the current Glossy configuration, confirm that we're in an uninitialized state. We can see that we have no peers. If I look at mounted file systems, I've just got uh, uh, if you like the, the defaults of root and boot. Um, if I look at the disks which are actually available to the box, we can see that I also have I have VDA, which is uh, where the root and boot are actually allocated to, and I've also got VDB and VDC on this particular node. And if I look at example 1-2 and spell it correctly I can see that I also have uh, a VDB here um, so effectively I have four nodes um, network interfaces all of that active across all four and a free disk at least one available to each of these four nodes so that what we've got is a, an uninitialized environment. So let's take a look at the Glossy Deploy program options. Just using the minus H. So we can see that we can provide some level of override at uh, runtime. So by default the tool will uh, start a web server on port 8080. We can override that with minus P as shown here. Um, and also a recent change has been the minus F option. So uh, if you don't specify minus F, what the tool will do is to perform a subnet scan looking for Gluster D ports that are open, which is port 24007. However, if you specify the minus F and provide an any file, an example is here, provided within the, the archive that you download from Gluster Forge, It's in any file format, and I've just got a node names variable, and then I just list down the nodes that will be part of uh, the initial configuration. So as you can see, that, that we've got some nodes which do make sense, and one that doesn't. So this is part of the testing that I've done just to make sure that we filter out rubbish if we encounter it within the any file. So let's start it up. I'm going to start it um, and perform the subnet scan just so you can see what that looks like. And I'm passing the minus n, which is no password. So by default, um, the tool has an access key uh, that you need to supply to actually get through the login page. So the tool is now started and it's giving us this location here that we need to browse to. So if I bring in a web server, web server, web browser. Now what you'd normally do, if I wasn't specifying a minus n, is copy this copy it, throw it into there and start, and then we're into the tool. So the objective of the tool is to basically provide a, a simple and easy uh, configuration environment for uh, a cluster cluster. Uh, so you can try it out and see whether or not it fits the bill for your requirements. The steps that it's going to go through is uh, no discovery. Um, the tool uses SSH to perform tasks across the nodes. So SSH keys and public keys get distributed across these nodes. Uh, it's going to perform disk discovery to find free and used disks. Once those disks have been found, it's going to do um, and allow you to define the bricks. And the bricks are component parts of the volume. And it's the volume which will be mounted by uh, uh, client applications or clients. Moving on. So the first step is no discovery. So we've determined that we have uh, one subnet to choose from. Because each of these nodes only has one NIC. So we're going to scan that network. So while that's scanning, let's have a look at the log file that gets generated by the tool. And keep that going so we can see uh, as we go through these steps. 
what kind of information we get written to the bot. So the scan has found four boxes. See here, port 24007 is found open on these locations. It's taken these IP addresses from subnet scan and done a DNS resolution on them to find a friendly name. So I've got three nodes in addition to the node that I'm running on, which is designated with the asterisk. Now I've got plus that I want to uh, form, so I hit create. You can see here the peer probe, which is the joining process, that succeeded on two, three, and four. Then back to the UI, the cluster has been created. Now back to the SSH keys. So we've got two options available to us. If we have a password, which is common to all the nodes, which is supplied here. If we have unique passwords, then we can supply them here. So in my instance, I have just a simple Red Hat password that's the same across each one of these builds. So I'm going to distribute those keys. That's done. And now those keys are in place, I can perform disk discovery. This actually sends a Python script across to each of the nodes to look for uh, unused drives. Um, so I'm interested in BDB. Uh, I've got this guy here, BDC. So what I'm going to do is select everything and deselect BDC. So those are going to be the bricks that I'm going to be focusing on. Now every brick will be defined the same. So what I'm going to do here is say um, we're going to have a general file serving use case. We're going to enable snapshots, which is a future feature for Gluster, not available today coming soon um, and then each one of these bricks will be based on uh, an LVM volume group called Gluster, logical volume called Gluster and the logical volume is mounted to this location within the file system. So I've selected snapshots so as I mentioned snapshots isn't currently available from Gluster itself so this is basically a feature which is allowing the developers to test these kind of functionality if you choose to select it, you need to be aware that this isn't recommended for general consumption. This is just for testing. So what we'll do is we'll go back, we'll press cancel. We'll turn that off. And we'll build the bricks. So as I mentioned, the SSH keys are coming in useful now as it's dispatching a build brick script to each of those nodes to format the drives that we've allocated or we've identified has been part of our configuration. All the formats are done, and now I have four bricks, and there's the size of the bricks. So the volume we'll call my role. Uh, we'll, these are the out of the box preset use cases, so generic use case, virtualization. If I choose virtualization, then what type of virtualization? Is it for Glance? Is it for Cinder? Is it for Rev or Overt, for example? There's also a, a Hadoop environment as well. So I'm going to keep this actually to virtualization and choose to use Cinder since it does more optimization steps that we can look at. By default, uh, it starts off with a distributed volume, which basically gives you no fault tolerance to a brick or a node failure. So uh, if I select all these bricks now in a distributed volume, I can see a summary is telling me that my vol would be four bricks, a raw of capacity of 40 gig, a usable capacity of 40 gig that offer no fault tolerance. But that's not good enough. Yeah, so I've changed my mind and I want to go to a replicated. So let's do a replicated volume. So now all these figures uh, are reset and the fault tolerance will be a single node. So my replica count is two. So I need to specify the bricks in groups of two. So this will be a pair. And as before, you can set them in here, and if you decide you've made a mistake, you can throw them back and redo them. So that sets up a replication relationship between these two bricks. So whenever a file is created, if it hits this replica pair, then you'll get one copy here, one copy there. And we can see at the bottom, it's also updated our usable figure because we're replicating. So we've got a mirror going on here, so our usable is half of our rule. And if we click create now, the 
whole create process starts. If we jump to this screen here, we can see the commands being issued, what commands are being issued, what responses are being sent back to the web interface. They can track it here, you don't need to track it in the log. Logs really just there for diagnostics if things that go wrong. So now the my vol volume is complete and created. We click next, and that's the end of the configuration step. So that is the initial config of a distributed storage system done. We have created a cluster. We have discovered three disks. We have formatted the disks uh, as per user selection. We've mounted those formatted bricks and created and optimized a volume as for a particular use case. In this case it was virtualization with OpenStack Cinder. Now we click quit. See that the CLI is now uh, exited. And let's just have a quick look to see what we see in terms of the configuration to make sure that I haven't uh, tried to pull the wool over your eyes. So if we do a list of peer status we can see that yes we have three uh, three peers defined. If we do a cluster vol info, we can see that we created a my vol volume. It's in a started state, so that's ready to accept uh, connections right now. Uh, it's in a two by two configuration, so i.e. there are two replica sets um, with these bricks here, which are the ones that we selected. These are the volume optimizations that were applied. So that this group here are related to um, KVM type use case for virtualization. And these storage owner UID and uh, GID are basically set to uh, provide compatibility with uh, Cinder because Cinder expects those kind of uh, UID and uh, group ID on the volume. And then I've turned off SIFs and turned off NFS because this volume would only be used using the cluster native client. And that's done. And that's how easy it can be to put your toe in the water of a distributed storage file system. Thank you.